Hey guys, I thought I would just show you how I put together this latest kind of soap I have. It's the unicorn soap bars and they turned out so freaking adorable. I just love it. So here I am blending up my colors and I usually just pour a little bit of uh, sweet almond oil or olive oil or canola oil as a carrier oil to mix the colors in. And I'm just using this little whisk that I got from Ikea for a couple dollars. They're great to have. Now it's time to mix up our oils. And I like to add in my titanium dioxide right away. This helps the batter be a bit more white colored. I'm using some extra virgin olive oil and so it can kind of give the, the soap a, a green hue. So we use the titanium dioxide to kind of counteract that bit. And so now I'm using one of my favorite colors, it's Eco Pink, I think it's by Nurture Soap Supply. Just makes a lovely pink. I'm not sure why I needed to mix my <laughs> batter again there for a second. <laughs> Alright, so this time I'm trying pouring my bits of color mica into my little pots that I like to use first. Seeing how that goes with it at the bottom. It was okay. So far it doesn't really make too much of a difference. But now I'm adding my lye water to my mixed oils. And then I'm going to blend it for a bit until I can get a really light trace. I really prefer a thin trace for a lot of the designs and so I've been using really lower temperatures. Like I think this time I let the lye water get to room temperature and the oils were probably about 80, 85, somewhere in there. So it was very cold compared to when you do it like at 110. Alright, so I'm using a scent called Spa Fusion for this one from, uh, I think it's called Majestic Mountain, but it's, it's the sage.com. You can find it online and they're here in Utah and so it's nice to order from them because it arrives really quickly. I also like to order from Brambleberry because they have a lot of selection, a lot of fun things too. So I'm just adding in this scent and seeing how it goes. It's always a little exciting when you're using scents that you haven't used before and just to see how they actually react in the, the soap. And this one did really, really well. I didn't have any problem with it getting um, thickening up too fast. If anything, I kind of had to wait a while for it to thicken up to the thickness I needed at the end there. So that was happy. And this recipe I plan on using in my column pour technique that I've been working on. And so far that's been fun, except both times I've done it, my, my soap has started to thicken up too fast. And so I'll have to do the room temperature try for that one. All right, so I'm just dividing my batter here into the four different colors, white being the fourth color. We've got the the purple and the blue and the pink. Now the purple ends up being a weird gray color at first. So I actually end up mixing up some more purple and I did it in the oil again and I would recommend that. Later on another soap I tried just throwing some mica right into that batter and using my um, my stick blender to mix it but it just it's just much easier, easier to add it to oil first because it will blend in much better. And especially if you were using one of the oxides, you definitely need to do that because the micas blend in pretty good. The oxides, like the pink, don't as well. And the titanium dioxide, because they get a little bit more clumpy because they're more like a chalk-like consistency rather than the really silky mica powders. Anyway, see how I, this purple is just kind of a weird color? It Usually all of this end up lightening, so it's not so yellowy. So it probably would have just been like a really pale lavender, but I'm glad that I went ahead and darkened it a bit because I was happy, really happy with how it turned out. It matched the embeds about perfectly. So I don't yet um, measure accurately my mica. I listened to some videos saying that that's a really good idea to do and I, I can see the intelligence behind that so you can replicate what you're doing exactly, but I'm still not doing that. <laughs> but that was probably 
another half teaspoon or so would be my guess there. And that just really purpled it up a bit. That looks a lot nicer. And happily this um, batch of, of soap is moving very slowly. You can see how it still is like maybe a syrup type consistency. And so I had plenty of time to go ahead and mess with the color. So that was, that was happy. Now, for this one I'm going to do, I don't even know what the technique is called, but it's where you tilt your, your loaf just a little bit and then pour it down the side. But I ran into some problems with not having the right type of um, containers for this. And so I'm gonna be investing in the, the long nose spout type containers to help me get more control over what comes out. But it's still really fun to watch. And what I want to do actually is let it slide down at the edge. There we go. So um, you'll notice eventually through this I end up getting a bit of a spill going because I, I missed that edge and it went right off the, the edge of it and into the, into the soap mold. So that was fun to clean up. But look at that pretty pink. And really that pink kind of stays that color. It doesn't really change a whole lot. Whereas some of them, I mean, it's just kind of interesting to see how they, they change. This one looks a little bit more green here, and I think it ended up looking a bit more bluish in the final piece. But so what I'm doing here is just kind of alternating my colors. And you can see that as I add more, it, it pushes it over. I'm doing a very sloppy version of it, but it still turned out really cute. But this is how it goes when you're learning, right? You just... I've been trying new patterns and stuff that I haven't tried before because I, I haven't done so for a couple years now and so I'm getting back into it mostly because I realized it's very relaxing for me actually and so it's been a good way for me to unwind in the evenings. I usually do it at night and finish up the bar and put it in the oven so it can sit all, all night and then it's really fun the next day to have something to look forward to when you get to cut into the soap. So if you've ever made it, that's really the funnest part. So this one was very nice and relaxing because you can see that this batter is just behaving beautifully. It's just saying nice and liquid. I didn't have any issues. On one of my batches I had the issue of ricing come up and I think it was the, the fragrance that I used actually. It was that Awapuhi Sea Berry. So I might have had the oils maybe with like room temperature um, lye and oils it would have worked fine I'm not sure why it did the ricing thing with it so I got to learn about that and when that happens basically you just need to mix it up again with the stick blender to blend all that oil that kind of it, it gets like separated off into little pockets of the oil itself and so that was kind of strange but this one is beautiful turned out so nice I need to try this one for the column pour you can see there at the bottom that I have a bunch of <laughs> bunch of soap on the bottom, but luckily I put out this nice, it was a clean sheet of paper when I started, and so eventually I'll just scoop that back into the top of it because I needed every bit of soap for this batch to have enough height to be able to kind of pile it up down the middle. I tried making this one before with this recipe that I had that was an older recipe, and this one is about 110 ounces, and I think the first recipe was for a 120 or 130, and it just was way too much. So probably about 115 would be perfect to get plenty of height. These were a little bit shorter than what I intended, but once I got all the embeds in there, it was plenty tall, so I really like how it turned out. But aren't those colors just fun? So the pattern that ends up in the soap shows up like that because of how I poured it in. And so it'll be kind of layered, and some of them are kind of diagonally layered, and that's why you kind of have your your whole loaf mold be lifted up with a cloth or something underneath it, so it will kind of have a diagonal tilt to it. So I'd like to try to scrape out my bowls as well as I can, especially if I'm having the time to, like with this, this batch that's moving nice and slowly, so I'm not in a rush. Um, You'll know what I mean if you made soap when you suddenly have to rush really quick and it doesn't matter anymore about scraping anything. You're just trying to make sure you can get the, the soap in the mold. But every bit of this soap, um, right now it's, it's just the batter that you can add right back into it. And then with for cleanup, it's really nice to have scraped your bowls out really, really well 
because it's all just going to turn into soap anyway. And so it's better to just like save every bit and let it turn into soap and the nice pretty bar. Because otherwise you're just having to soak these containers and get the soap that's created in them to to be able to just dissolve and it can take a while. But you can actually scrape it out pretty clean so you don't have to worry about it. So now I'm just going through. The, also the benefit of the scraping. I like to leave some in my bowls at the end here. so. I'm going to put it on the top purposefully, so I always leave uh, a few tablespoons at least to be able to add to the colors on top. And now on this one I end up going ahead and doing a nice pattern on the top even though I knew I was going to be mounding it up and adding embeds. But I also wanted to show you that it could be a stopping point as well. And So when we come to that I'll let you know. But right now what I'm doing is just getting my little bits of clay that are left over of each color and I'm putting them down kind of just all over but there is a, a method to the madness it's it's actually kind of horizontal stripes of the different colors and I just try to get each a bit of color to go the whole um, length of the the loaf so every bar will have some of that color too here I'm scraping in a little bit more of my white might have been overkill, but like I said, I wanted to be able to mound it up as high as I could, so every bit of batter became important to me. And then, the reason I don't just add my clay, I'm, I keep trying to say clay, the reason I don't add my soap batter to these cups themselves that have the mica in it is because I like to have some of this mica that's just mixed up with the oil at the end of each one so I can save it for on the top like this because the mica is like the most vibrant dark version of the colors that are all through the soap and I think it's kind of fun having that show what you started with and then what it looked like when you mixed it in with the soap so you've got your pastels from that as well boy that echo pink sure is bright on its own isn't it but you can see what it turns into it's that beautiful pink corally color and then I didn't put any gold in the soap itself, but since this was unicorns, gold just always makes it feel a bit magical to me. So that's what I did is I added in more of the gold as well. And now I'm just taking a chopstick and instead of just doing figure eights from the side to side, I'm kind of doing them all over the place. I just like how it looked this way. and. It helped me be a bit more deliberate if I ever saw like a, a puddle of the colors collecting then I could go through it specifically and help it drag around and meld into the other colors too so it can have this cool marbled effect. Anyway this is, it is very fun. It looks fun doesn't it? But, and it is fun. It really is. It's my favorite part. Because <laughs> it's just so pretty especially in person it's just shimmering like crazy. So it was kind of hard to um, then go through and do my my waves in it. I tried it first to see where we were at and you can tell that it just was so um, soft at this point. I wait a few more minutes and I can finally get it to start coming up. Now don't worry it does end up being super cute but um, the way I had it with just the design on top you could stop right there maybe add some glitters and just have it be a regular size bar and not put any embeds and that would be a great stopping point. I often will make my soaps like that too. But on this one I wanted to make this top all wavy and textured. And so what I'm doing is basically just taking from the sides and mounding it up in the center. And so I go through a few different times. As it is right now it's not quite as um, peaked as I like it. It's kind of like when you're making meringue out of eggs, you know, there's different stages of what the peaks get to, or, or whipping cream would be another example. And this you can see that it's still like dropping into place a little bit more. I haven't done it for a while and I got a little bit impatient, but in a few more minutes it actually responds even better. Alright, and then I've got my embeds that'll be coming up soon too. Uh, with these embeds, I actually just used a silicone mold. I think it was a candy mold that I found at Joann's. And 
um, it worked great for the melt and pour soaps. That's what I did with those. It's just the kind that you can melt down and add colors to. And they turned out really nice and then I actually went through with a paintbrush and some mica powder and then just made them a little bit more fancy too. Alright, so you can see here now that the, the soap's behaving more as it needs to for doing these peaks. And now I'm just kind of helping to implement the design that we had. And I'm going to be adding a little bit more of the mica suspended in oil on top of this too, just to kind of tie it all together a little bit more and kind of conceal the parts that started getting a little bit smeary because I don't really like it when it blends in so much like that. But now this drizzle, there we go. It just looks really, really nice like that. All right, and so then I started trying with some embeds and this first time I put it in, it started to sink a little bit. And so um, I decided to wait a little bit before I move on to others. Oh, that, this must be the others. I had a, a test time that I put it in and it, it sunk, but I think I just cut that out. And so now I'll show you how I put these embeds in. Now you notice that I have these dots and lines going alongside of the wood. And I've measured those out because most of the bars are about an inch in width. And then I have that little dot in the center to show me where the middle of the bar would be. And I try to align up my embeds with that. Now the reason I do that is when I go through and cut it with my wire, I want my wire to be able to have a spot that can just slice right down at that one inch mark that doesn't have an embed that's gotten in its way. And for the most part, I was able to achieve that. There's a couple that I kind of had to slice the embed just slightly with the wire and you gotta be really careful doing that because those wires can break easily. And melt and pour soap that the embeds are made from is a bit harder than the cold process soap. Cold process soap is way easy to cut with the wire, provided that you don't let it harden up for too many days. I usually do it within the first 12 to 24 hours. I get really impatient and I just can't wait to see what the soap's going to look like, so I just cut right into it as soon as I can, as soon as it's not going to squish the soap. All right, so what that was was some rubbing alcohol that I sprayed to the top of it, and that helps all the soap be a little bit sticky and wet so I can add in these bits of glitter. And I'm just using a super fine cosmetic grade gold glitter and also an iridescent one. And then that that um, alcohol will evaporate very quickly and so it doesn't doesn't leave your soap bars wet. All right, ta-da, it's done. Now I'm going to put it in the oven overnight. I usually turn on the oven to the lowest temperature for just a minute, turn it right back off and then just set it into the oven. Sometimes I forget to heat it up first and I still just put it in the oven and it turns out just fine. And so here you can see the next day when I got it cut, this is how it turned out. It gave a lot of different, just interesting patterns. I was really happy with the color disbursement. Oh, and a little sneak peek at the cupcakes I've been working on too. But here's a single bar itself. Isn't that pretty? So that was fun. Hope you enjoyed it.